start to understand yourself. And as you explore these, you can start becoming the puppet master of your own brain. Hey guys, Matt Tate here once again from Fork in the Road, your channel for transformation. As always, these videos are all about helping you to transform, helping you to understand yourself, unpacking some of the many lessons from my coaching practice, from neuro-linguistic programming, from life coaching, from Ericksonian hypnosis, from understanding you so that you can transform quickly instead of years of, you know, just trying to process. So we can actually help you shift forward. One of the books which I'm currently researching and unpacking for my audience is this one, Transforming Yourself by Steve Andreas. And it says here, Becoming who you want to be. Love the cover with the dude chiseling himself out. <laughs> it's quite cool. And so what I've been doing, I've been going through the elements of identity, but in particular, the model that Steve Andreas put together was the model of your self-concept and how your self-concept is made up of a bunch of qualities, of ways that you behave, that you believe about yourself. Right, so this is really powerful because if you can believe and get and, and, and realize the things that you already have in your grasp, and you can start to build a, a different self concept. And when you do that, your automatic actions will change. That's why we are doing these videos, why I'm doing them, is because I want to show you the value that's in that book. So I thought this time, what we've done in the last couple of videos is we unpacked what is a self-concept, we unpacked the elements of a self-concept, and we drilled down into unpacking, you know, how we store this in our mind, how we represent it inside our nervous system. And then once you get the building blocks of that, you can start to represent it differently or realize other examples where you have actually uh, been fulfilling these concepts differently. The whole point is to change yourself and change yourself quickly, automatically and permanently. Sounds good, doesn't it? So let's jump in. And what I'm doing today is I'm looking at one of the areas in the book where we were talking about those elements of the self-concept. And so if you bring a quality up in your mind, and you bring that quality up. And for me, I wrote down one, and that is, I love understanding others, right? When you get the ego out of the way, I really love understanding, I wonder where or how that anger got in that person or how that guilt got in that person. Or, you know, how did that self-confidence, like just this strut, walking down the street, looking confident, where did that come from? You can see their self-confidence their self concept coming out right now I'm in a hotel room on the Gold Coast in Queensland Australia and we're up here for three days or three nights and this is our last night and so I'm doing a quick video because I've been walking around the Gold Coast Cavill Avenue down the bottom there I'll put some photos in this video and as I'm walking around I'm seeing these people just strutting their stuff around I mean they're good looking people don't get me wrong they've got reasons perhaps to be strutting their stuff but there is an internal vibration coming out of them these people think they're awesome well, that's a self-concept and I, I love and then of course conversely you see some people who have a low self-concept so you've got the extremes being shown in the same street of Cavill Avenue there are some, you know, you can see that some people who are begging and they're poor and they've they got no money, you can tell. And there are other people who are just strutting like they own the joint. Maybe they do own the joint. <laughs> but regardless, it's the energy inside of them I'm interested in, right? So within myself, I've definitely got a quality. So you can look at yourself for what qualities are inside you, but I've definitely got a quality where I want to understand people. And as I'm walking around, I'm looking at them going, how did that person get to that place? 
And how did this person get to this place? The person with the high vibration where they're just looking amazing and the person with the low vibration where they're all hunched over. And so what is that? What does that look like? And how can I help myself to raise my vibration? It's a good question, isn't it? And you can ask the question of yourself. How could you raise your vibration? I'm walking around the Gold Coast. I'm walking around surfers paradise. I'm walking around all these beautiful people and some not so beautiful, but I just love watching the strut, you know, like when they just think they're awesome. Where's that come from? It's how they present it in their mind. And then it comes out because then they're out exercising and then their muscle tone looks good and so forth and so on. Equally, there's a lot of people down on those streets who, let's say, age has caught up with them and they've tried to maintain that youthful glow, shall we call it? And so they've had to put Botox in here and they've Botox there and you can tell a bit of work's gone on to try and maintain this self-concept. And so when the looks are not looking like the 21 year olds and they're now 41 or 51 or whatever they are, you've got to find another self-concept or you have to alter your face or your features with those kind of, um, you know, ways of changing things. So look, it's very interesting to observe and I'm fascinated to scientifically pull this apart so that I can help people with their self-concept. So this is from the Steve Andreas book. I hope you enjoy this little thing that I'll go through with you right now. So inside my self-concept, I was just unpacking it for myself and you can think about yourself. I had this thing where I definitely want to understand others as a coach, as I'm with someone who might have anxiety or they might be stuck, or they might be demotivated. I want to understand what's inside them. And I take a let's see policy. What's inside, let's see, I don't know. Let's ask some questions and see what beliefs come out. Now, the self-concept is a massive belief, it's a generalization. And so that's why I'm doing this video. So with me, understanding others, let's jump into it. Okay, so, Modalities. Now, if you understand the modalities, it's the things you see, hear, feel, and think, right? So those are the four. Now for me, when I close my eyes and think about understanding others, I instantly go to Zoom sessions. I do Zoom sessions with clients and I can see them on the screen. I'm asking them questions and I'm watching them unpack their problem to me so I can help them release it, dissolve it, evolve it, and come up with a plan to move forward. I'll be looking also at my notes. Visually, if I close my eyes, I can see my notes. I'm scribbling notes down madly, capturing the words they're saying. Um, I've just got my notes here right now. Uh, there's also an inner knowing that there is a surface problem. So there will be a problem that they're stuck that's coming through. Uh, and I'll also feel certain there'll be a feeling inside that I can help, right? So these are modalities. These are the things inside me that help me know I want to understand others. There's an energy, there's a moving towards. One of the elements in there, in the, the process elements I brought up before, was are they associated or are they disassociated? These pictures or images or feelings as I look at them in my database, as I mentioned before, it's part of a database, all of this information inside you, your whole system. And so in my database of, I understand others, well, how do I know? Like, why am I so certain I really am keen to understand others? Well, I've got lots of evidence. I have lots of Zoom sessions I've done. I have lots of one-on-ones. I have group sessions I've run. I have questions I'm asking. I'm really, there's this energy of I'm hunting for the answer or the clue that will help that client to give them value, you know, for the session that they've come to me before. 
Um, and so I looked at the submodalities, and so for me it was the associated or disassociated, right? So I look at the picture and say, yes, I am definitely, I, I'm, I'm in the experience, uh, I'm in my body, and it's like I've dropped into the scene, there's a picture I've got, but I've dropped into the scene, and it's like I'm sitting at my computer, looking through my own eyes, and looking through my own eyes at my notes, and that one example is I'm definitely what they call associated, which means I'm not seeing myself in the scene, I am in the scene, right? That's the picture I'm getting. And I'm seeing things, I'm hearing things, I'm feeling things as I'm going through that, absolute knowing that I am wanting to understand others. Does that make sense? So this is the image I've got and it's right in front of me and I can see it there. Then I went into the submodalities and I looked, okay, well, this image visually, uh, when I close my eyes, it's very bright. Uh, it was framed, though I did question that, but is it panoramic but all framed, but I'll stay, stick with frame for the moment. Um, it was very near and it was so near that I was, I could jump into it very quickly. So it was right sort of here in my visual space when I close my eyes and sense it. Uh, and it was a movie. Right, so it's moving and I'm, I'm seeing the person's talking to me, I'm seeing my notes, I'm writing. Um, auditory, so the sound, it was a, a normal volume, right? So that's another element you can look at in your memory that you've got. Uh, the feeling was, I'm hunting for information, I'm watching very intently. And so that's a feeling that was in my heart. And then I have a thought, thinking brain comes in and says, what's in there, let's see, is what I'm always thinking. Let's see, let's see what happens when I do a coaching session. Let's see what they say. Let's see what words tumble out of their mouth. And so these were different things um, that I went through in my self-concept, right? So think about that for yourself. Think about how you, one of the qualities of your life where you can unpack that for yourself and you can look at, okay, well, what is it? Like, how do you know you are kind? How do you know you are stable? How do you know you are confident in a context or something that's generalized across your entire world? How do you know you're very well organized? Well, because I can see a picture of all of my files very well organized. You know, I can... Uh, you know, hear, um, there might be something in your world you can hear, maybe. I'm not sure. I mean, whatever it is, that maybe I can feel this sense of certainty. I know exactly what to do tomorrow, what the number one priority is, and the number two priority is tomorrow, All right? That's someone who might be organized. Um, and what do you think to yourself? Got that done, got to get this done, check out the to-do list, or whatever it might be. But there'll be an intention that comes in behind that. So have an unpack of your value or your quality, which is part of your self-concept. Something that's really part of you. Something that is definitely you. I am definitely this thing. Where you know that is part of who you are. And then close your eyes and go and explore. Well, how do I know? Well, I've got a whole bunch of images. Where are they in your personal space? Oh, they're laid out in front of me. Uh, are they, when you access them, are they sequential? Or can you access all of them at the same time? And then when you bring up one at a time and you jump into it, do you step into it? Or can you see yourself in the picture? Uh, what are, is it a visual thing? Is there sounds? Are there thoughts? Are there feelings? And so you go into these process elements and start to understand yourself. And as you explore these, you can start becoming the puppet master of your own brain. So remember these elements here, we have the number of examples of that quality for you. We have the location. So when you close your eyes, where are these images? Are they left, right, straight ahead, down a little bit, up? It doesn't matter where they are. Are the images or the examples that are in front of you, are they simultaneous or are they sequential? And I questioned that one because I thought they were, they were all there at the same time, meaning they're simultaneous. 
but then I access them sequentially. So very interesting. Uh, the modalities, so are all the modalities included are the visual, the vision, the sound, the thoughts and the feelings. And it doesn't have to all be there. Can you easily step into them associated or disassociated? Can you see yourself in the scene or, or are you in the scene, looking through your own eyes, experiencing it, right? And then, of course, the sub modalities where you go into the visual field and look at is it a, you know, is it framed or is it panoramic? Is it bright or is it dim? Is it color or black and white? Is is the picture you know far or near? Is it a big picture or a small picture? Right. So elements like that, it's good to know because you can start to play with those things. And so, of course, you've got feelings, where are they in the body? And then you've got sounds, the volume of the sounds, that these are the little elements that break apart those, those elements. So that is the beginning point of discovering your self-concept. And when you do that, this is all in Steve Andreas's book, you then become the puppet master. Then there's a whole bunch of exercises beyond that, where you can start to shift your self-concept. You can, I think the simplest one is to add examples. Taking examples from the past that you have deleted, and I think this is a powerful one, that you can bring back in a moment's notice and realize, oh, I'd forgotten about that. And I think this is a powerful one because there's a lot of examples that we have deleted. So that is my little example. I've got my quality, the one I brought up, which was the uh, understanding others. It's absolutely there. I'm absolutely certain there are hundreds of examples because I see many clients who I'm wanting to understand to give them value by helping them to shift, right? So this is a positive one. I want to leave it alone. It's all, it's a very, very positive thing. And it actually motivates me to do these videos. It motivates me to find new clients. It motivates me to do the marketing motivates me to do the marketing where maybe I didn't want to do the marketing, but I now am motivated because I'm thinking about helping and understanding others, which is exciting to me because I love it. So that is a way of understanding yourself by adding examples. Adding examples will help you move forward. Adding examples will strengthen it by making the pictures maybe bigger, by maybe, maybe, maybe making the pictures brighter, by uh, looking at the examples you've deleted in the past, that you've disregarded, that are still there, and there's lots of them. So it's a quality you want to strengthen, and it's a quality that you know you feel good when you do it, and you know you feel bad because you've got a very clear database inside you that tells you when you're not doing it. And then you'll feel bad because it meets your values and you're not doing it. And the question would then be why? But then we could jump into all of that. But we can strengthen your self-concept, make sure you're living to your self-concept and really beef that up. Now stay tuned because there's a whole lot more to this in this book, which I'll help unpack for you. There's a whole lot more that allows you to understand yourself. But more importantly, start to become the puppet master of your system and plug some new data in there. And this is not about, you know, putting something in there that's not, that's not relevant. We're going to be looking at the skill side of things. I mean, we don't want you having in your database, hey, I can fly a plane. And that's one of the examples in the book where someone had a high confidence database and could fly a plane visually, but as soon as the clouds came in, he was in all sorts of trouble because he hadn't learnt the art of flying a plane in the clouds, right? So we need to have all the skills to do a particular thing. And so there's that real nice balance we can get where we've got competence and confidence, right? So I don't want to be flying a plane even if I feel confident I can, because I've never done it before. <laughs> I've seen it in the movies, I'm not quite gonna uh, be jumping into a 747 and, and flying it around with a bunch of passengers. So there's still a skill element, but you know, there's a lot of things in our self, con con our self concept that we delete. You know, we're beating ourselves up or not really acknowledging 
some of the wonderful things we've done in our lives. And it's a simple way of remembering all of those examples. There's a whole lot more in the book where we can really start to access that. And I'm really looking forward to sharing the self-concept model even further in these videos. I hope this has helped you to start to explore your database, to start to understand one quality inside of yourself. Go back and watch the video again and start to go through the process elements of your self-concept or buy the book and start doing it yourself. Really fabulous self-concept model. This is Matthew Tate from Fork in the Road. As always, if you love these videos, click on the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of this screen, where which is the little symbol with my fork in the road symbol. And that is free and will allow you to access my videos on a regular basis. Matt Tate from Fork in the Road, signing out.